My name is Dr. Mavis. I'm one of the project strategic directors for London Professional Training Centre based at the semi campus in Rainham, London, UK. And I'm also very passionate about the international projects that London Professional Training Centre actually have invented about the past few years, um, which actually involves taking international UK um, certifications to um, different African countries. And um, LPTC, um, as the well-established organization in the UK, and we provide training and services to different sectors, industries, and support organizations to also improve their processes. Um, London Professional Training Center is a, a skilled and a development um, organization. Um, like I said in the beginning, we are in the UK, in the eastern part of London. So what we do really is we support corporate organizations and individuals to improve their competency in terms of what they do. We offer a lot of our professional certifications which support people to do their job better and which also support the good cost. And one very uh, special thing about our services is the fact that we are not just a training organization. We are an organization that identify the needs, but we provide the training and also provide services to organizations to help them to uh, implement the, um, the training that they receive in terms of building the capacity or improving the services that they offer. We serve different sectors in terms of the training we provide. We serve the healthcare sector, which is our main area of key strength. We also serve the educational sector. We serve the hospitality sector, the oil and gas. Uh, professionals in the technical and vocational skill sector, a whole lot of me. And um, we ensure that we support them to meet their aims and objectives to learn how in line with um, a part of the building. Um, before we came to Nigeria, over the past few years, we've had a lot of um, uh, African students coming to the UK. So um, do training with us. So we thought it was going to make a bit more sense to take our presence closer to Nigerians to save cost and also at the same time to get a lot more benefits um, taken closer to those that need it. But the challenges we've had has been kind of um, things that were expected anyway because of our cultural differences. Um, in the UK, people are used to compliance. In the UK, uh, since people do some trainings or do some things because they understand the reason why they should be compliant and there are legislations guiding it. But um, coming to Nigeria, we've had a, um, a few experiences where compliance in organizations is an issue, um, either because the company is not aware of what compliance should be, or because they don't just want to comply with um, um, the compliance regulations that guide their profession. And also, um, um, one of the challenges we've also had is the fact that getting people that can understand our UK framework in terms of content delivery. The academic and education system in the UK is quite um, structured that when people pass through a process, you know what was said of that person. But we realized that over the past few times, the colleagues, the staffing, the manpower we've had, uh, sometimes might not really uh, be, um, you might not get a skill from people based on what is presented on their CV, unfortunately. So what we then tend to do as an organization is we come into a, a place, we recruit the individuals into our team, and we are also then involved in trying to make sure they have the right um, and the passing to do the job we want them to do. Uh, another challenge as well, um, although it's again a special challenge, in fact that over the years um, in the UK we work very jointly with um, government organizations in terms of pulling out of our projects, approval, and sponsoring projects for their citizens. For in Nigeria it's quite a different sphere of business where um, it's not a very easy process for the government to be involved in supporting citizens in terms of educational development. But at the same time, when this opportunity is available, there are a lot of bureaucratic uh, processes which make delivery kind of difficult. One of our key playing set, uh, side is actually in the UK is the education. So we train teachers and also uh, train school owners and we train um, principals and managers. So what we decided to do as well for Nigeria is we did a survey and we did a school this year and realized that. Um, a lot of standards, the framework that is going to project this school might not be at the level that should be providing or producing the best candidates when it comes to student development. What we intended to do is to replicate our UK model in terms of the uh, 
capacity building programs we have for teachers, and also replicate it in the UK. So we're going to be providing training for teachers, uh, and this training are the trainings that teachers in the UK attend. So we are not reinventing anything, we are just replicating the training that teachers in the UK attend that makes them teachers with those skills that they have. Training such as safeguarding adults, uh, managing challenging behaviors, there's so many of them. And also what we also want to do is we realize that um, what drives the school process better is also the head of the school. Most of the time we realize that some of these school leaders in Nigeria might be people that have no part in the right leadership and management process. And so when they are managing the system, they don't have the right framework for operating. So we're going to be bringing a UK leadership framework which schools managers operate with and also train school leaders, school proprietors, school principals on actually understanding and using the school framework. And like I said, we don't just train them, we also support them to implement it. We're going to be giving those schools a lot of documentation, template materials to work with, which will make them to be able to um, um, sit on an international platform or on a benchmarking phrase with their competitors in the UK. Um, in training of schools, um, recently one of the first, the first thing we actually did when we started was we trained a lot of our professionals to become traders, which is the educational sector. We trained them to acquire the uh, international award in delivery training of almost about 400 professionals. That training was highly subsidized and funded. So, um, so now in Nigeria, we have a lot of competent people who are professional trainers accredited by the UK body. So the other project we've done with schools is um, a training which was on infection control in schools. We did a research and realized that um, a few Lagos schools have some infection outbreak where school children were ill, some actually died. So we thought that the best thing that they needed at that time was schools to understand what infection control was. Which in the UK we also deliver infection control training in schools. So we had that training rolled out. Um, it was commissioned by the UK team, delivered, it was actually free, it was funded. We worked in partnership with the National Health Organization to fund it. And um, school principals, school proprietors, school nurses had the opportunity to attend the training. And even the, some uh, participants from the ministries in Lagos were also part of that project. Initially, I was concerned. Um, I know that in Nigeria there's a lot of um, changes that need to be made, there's a lot of improvement, there's a lot of progress that need to be attained. But my initial concern was actually, is the framework there, is the, is the uh, curriculum development being in place? And um, lo and behold, actually, I did a few research and spoke to a lot of people who are in strategic schools. We realized that Nigeria's issue really is not actually with curriculum development. It's not really even with um, a framework setting. But the main problem they have has been with implementation. And with implementation comes to having the right manpower, it also comes to knowing and being able to apply the right framework. So, and also having the right leadership in a position to drive a process. So, what we want to do as an organization is to see how we can support in terms of leadership competency. We also want to see how we can support in terms of teachers' competency. And also see how we can support and improve their curriculum. We already have a curriculum, some of them that are great, but we're just going to be able to provide our international uh, program to help them either provide, uh, uh, deliver their current curriculum effectively or also upgrade the curriculum that they have.